in uh, Revelation chapter 21, and last class we had gone over verse 1 and 2. <clears throat> um, uh, and I'm sure you'll remember when I read it, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, which <clears throat> we found um, we found in the past, and also in this chapter in verse uh, 9 and 10, to be the bride of the Lamb, the wife of the Lamb, the bride. And, um, <clears throat> and she is coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And so he sees this spirit and he sees this way that is within her and it, it draws his heart out and he sees her that she's, she's not just a bride, da, 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 da. she's prepared as a bride because she has that spirit and that nature and that way about her. <clears throat> and then, um, so let's begin with uh, verse 3. Uh, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. <clears throat> All right, so um, love, there's actually a lot in here. <clears throat> it is, uh, and, and you know, one of the reasons why people have a hard time with the book of Revelation is they don't follow all of the things that are, uh, identified in there and put them together. Uh, for example, <clears throat> in this case, um, you have New Jerusalem coming down, being seen as coming down from God in that same spirit of Jesus in Philippians 2, where he made himself of no reputation. He, as it were, left God. He came down. He uh, became as a man, uh, as a servant, and as a man, and then as a servant, and then uh, as basically as a criminal, became obedient unto death. And um, all of that we've identified in the last class being seen in her. But he said the tabernacle of God is with men, and the tabernacle of God is where God dwells. It's his house. It's, it, it was Israel's religious edifice. It was his house. And so she is his house, she is his wife, she is all of those things. And so when she's coming down, he's in her, of course. How is she going to do that without Christ being in her, without the Lamb being in her, without it being an, uh, an act of <clears throat> submission to the nature that is within her, an act to, of, of, of love to the heart that is in him, that is in her, on and on and on. Just, you know, I mean, these, these scriptures are great. <laughs> They're just great. But you have to understand, you have to be following this book in the way that it's putting it. Um, and and he's, he's seeing this and he's comprehending this. Um, uh, and, but it starts with, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, <clears throat> okay, so I assume that this voice was booming. Uh, we, we've we discussed that before. There's a lot of loud voices going on. <clears throat> and um, so let me just read a little bit from here. Uh, in Revelation 21.3, we hear a, a loud voice with a proclamation. So the point isn't the loud voice. The, the point is, what is it saying? And then, though it be loud, uh, though it be a loud voice, few seem to hear it because religious voices and viewpoints are louder. And that's, you know, if you take this outside of the context of end time events and you put it that God is continually trying to open our eyes to the relationship he wants us to have with him um, uh, in oneness and, uh, um, and that he, the Lamb of God, is the image of God, came down to be the image of God, Christ crucified and seen more perfectly to express that image on Calvary in, in selflessness and in um, uh, benefit to others outside himself, uh, to his own loss. All of that is the definition of lamb and is the definition 
of Jesus um, and of the Messiah, the Christ, the one who came to free Israel and da 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 da. That's the one. That's how he did it. <clears throat> so um, it says that the, the voice says that the dwelling place of God is with men. We are his dwelling place. And, you know, just to make sure, I mean, we can flip over to Ephesians 2 uh, and see that. Ephesians 2, verse 20, uh, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building are fitly framed together, um, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. And so we see that his goal is, uh, is clear to uh, Paul also that this is not a um, <clears throat> this is not some random thought in the book of Revelation that this is the culmination and we're, we've only got one other chapter after this so this is the culmination of all that was in the heart of God not just to save mankind but before that in, in Genesis 126, let us make man our own image and after our likeness. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> so, so that loud voice is declaring something. That, that strong voice is declaring something, you could almost say strong in the heart of God, that the tabernacle of God now, we're, we're to be inhabited by him. So the thing that makes this loud voice so significant is that this verse says it came from the throne. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, and, but it's coming from God himself. It's coming from his um, uh, heart. <clears throat> um, that he wants his kind and his life to be in us. <clears throat> and that this throne is whether it doesn't say it, you know, it doesn't say specifically who it came from, but whether it came from God or whether it came directly out of the Lamb or whether it came from a messenger we call angel, a messenger, it is all from that heart. It is not just God is sovereign and you know we need to listen to God this is getting past all of that and we'll talk about some of that here in a minute <clears throat> um, so let's go ahead and, and uh, let's read verse 5 <clears throat> and he that sat upon the throne said behold I make all things new and he said unto me right for these th these words are true and faithful so we see um, that this voice that was loud that came out of heaven, we see the voice from the throne, which we know the Lamb was on that throne, is declaring that, I, he's saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the Greek alphabet. I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. I am Alpha and Omega. The things that he declared all the way in the first chapter where he was first seen by John and John fell down at his feet as though dead. This is now as though alive in him and him alive in them. This is the fulfillment of that. This is God bringing these things to pass. <clears throat> um, and that he, may, he makes them new, not that he is the maker of things new or, the, uh, or uses his hands to make us new, but he is what makes all things new because he is Alpha and Omega, see. If he, was, if he made us new, then, you know, we would be, we would be one of the letters of the, alpha, of the Greek alphabet, but he's the fulfillment of all of that. Um, verse 6 and he said unto me it is done I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life <clears throat> doesn't that sound good 
Oh, it gets way better than that. Even, even in this chapter and in the next chapter, we become, as it were, by the Lamb in us, New Jerusalem becomes the source of the water of life that's flowing out of her to others. That's better than us getting sips and, or getting a cold glass or it being about us, my thirst, my, what I need. I want, I want the water of life, you see. Um, it's, he says that here, but very shortly she's seen, New Jerusalem, the wife of the Lamb, she is seen as out of her is flowing rivers of living water to others because it's flowing from the throne and the lamb upon that throne, enthroned in her. <clears throat> and um, so, verse 7, he that overcometh, and we've discussed that overcoming, that uh, he that overcomes even as I have overcome, um, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. He that dies in the same manner, uh, if you, you are, then are you children, and heirs, I'm thinking again now of Romans 8, 17. Then if children, then heirs are inheritors, if so be that you suffer with me, if so be that you have this spirit of selfless giving. Because if, you, if you're selfless, you're going to suffer, if, especially if you're selfless and you're around a whole lot of people that are selfish. There will be a certain amount of suffering. <clears throat> but in truth, um, to one who has that spirit and that image, it's not like Jesus was, you know, oh, this is horrible, this is terrible, this is a heat, you know, what shall I say? Save me from this hour, but for this cause came I to this hour. This is not, you know, I mean, sometimes I think we get all caught up in, in the, the wrong motives of everyone else around us instead of, you know, it is a privilege to suffer with him. It is a privilege. It is, we're being blessed that God would even allow us to be put in such situations like that. We, I'm sorry, we are. That is, and those things are not even supposed to be worthy to be compared. And we go, well, it won't be when I get to the glory part. I think that's really should be working in us now that we're with the Lamb. That this is that this. Here's why. Here's why. Whatever is going on around us, that's not what's going on, shouldn't be what's going on in us. Those are, you know, and we use this word, and I'm sick of using it, but it's the truth. Those are opportunities to, to not only manifest the Lamb through us, but to release something that can save them on the cross. Father, forgive them. See, not, well, you're wrong, but thank God I'm right, or something like that. You know, that's spirit. There is supposed to be an overriding, it, it says in 1 Peter, the spirit of glory rests on you. It's not all about, you know, well, they were wrong and, you know, this and that and everything else. They're, and here's why. Because selfless giving is our nature because it's the lamb. But if it's not, then we're, we're you know, we're still more in the earth we're still more reacting. We're still more hurt. But the book of Revelation is constantly looking down in the earth and showing all the agony and everything. And in the heavens or being above, seated with Christ above, there's a completely different view of everything. Same stuff, different view. And... Um, and to me, then you're not overcoming. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not overcoming. It's overcoming you. That's right. Or it's almost overcoming you. Well, it's on my back, but I'm still walking. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a monster on my back, but I'm still walking. No. No. Jesus carried that cross. And, you know, if God wants to send somebody else to help you carry it, but it is not about going, well, this is too much or this is whatever. But it is too much if it's not the Lamb. It just is. It just is. It just is. It just is. It's going to be too much. It's going to be, it's going to be reactionary. It's going to be um, 
uh, all about troubles and trials, but praise God, I'm staying with Jesus. Well, isn't that what we used to believe before we even heard this reality? That, you know, well, praise God, I'll get to go to heaven eventually and they'll burn in hell forever you know there's some sort of, well i mean there's some sort of solace in the fact that they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna get theirs or whatever jesus is dying to save them and and romans really spells that out i mean it could, i'm telling you that the book of romans could actually become offensive if we ever understood it here's why because he never talks about good people he talks about he died for the worst people have you know romans 5 he died for the worst people and we're going well i wasn't that bad you know we got we're wrong we're messed up we don't we don't see it as he sees it anyway sorry get off on all this but you know but I'm, well i mean it's it's here in the words he that overcometh he that overcometh the overcoming is that is that the spirit and nature of the lamb has overcome us not that we're going to overcome them and they're going to lose out or they're wrong and i'm right because i'm going with the lamb that's not that what's overcome we're the one that's supposed to be overcome by his spirit and nature that's what makes us the bride because he lives on a, he's he doesn't just live in us he's on a throne inside of us and that means that his nature that lamb nature rules over our reactions and all this kind of stuff so it doesn't say and, and she's coming down and she's got you know she's the one with the rod of iron no no she's coming down with that same spirit so and he that overcometh shall inherit see and the overcoming here is the ability to enter into those sufferings Amen. it's they're the sufferings of christ they're not just sufferings yes. or we are just suffering yes, right. and going through everything that everyone else is going sinners carnal christians it's just well this is life just tough you know and these people are just bad and mean and i'm being abused and, da -da 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 and all of that and no no if our eyes are on him if we're seeing him then we are overcome and therefore we we are overcomers because now he is seated on his throne inside of us and our view is father forgive him i mean you know at no point do you see jesus on the cross going my father's going to get you you know what i mean you're going down suckers going down to chinatown anyway he doesn't get into all that stuff he doesn't he doesn't do that because why he came to save those very people that are doing this his, that's his heart that's who he is that's who he is that's who he is that's who he is um, it's funny to get stuck on a word overcometh after this much time but that's that's what the spirit wanted to land on all of a sudden he that overcometh shall inherit all things then you can have it because you're not going to be gloating over stuff um, and I will be um, and I will be his God and he shall be my son Wow let's just read on for the fun of it but the fearful no let's skip that verse no seriously let's skip it verse uh, 8 I mean 9 and there shall come um, and there came unto me one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the last plagues and talked with me. He talked with me. He's a messenger. He's brought plagues. And he says, you, uh, he doesn't say this, it's understood. You have been through this process and you stayed with the Lord so now come here and I will show you something the bride the lamb's wife and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain showed me that great city the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God see it's just there it's just there 
And <clears throat> so this, and, and it's been said twice in this chapter from verse 1 to verse 10. Everything in his heart. I mean, this isn't Bible teaching or doctrine or let's, you know, let's know the Bible or let's, you know, let's know his heart. Let's see um, past all the things that can benefit me and all of the problems with everybody else. Because we're, you know, I mean, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be shocking to realize that our problems were worse than someone else that we're condemning? In God's eyes, in Jesus' eyes, in the, in the Lamb that wants to marry us' eyes. Wouldn't that be shocking? Because every man's way is right in his own eyes. This, I mean, that's, that's correct, isn't it? <laughs> it is. That's, there you go. That's what the Bible says. So who's going to argue with that? But it is, it, there, you know, in seeing... Um, you know, people talk about uh, the book of Revelation. He has fire in his eyes and all this stuff. And they go, oh, you know, it's the fire of hell if you mess up, you know, or something like that. Well, you know, there is, let's face it, he's perfect. We're not. We get in his presence. We're more aware of our junk. That's true. That's just the way it works. But can you also see part of the fire in his eyes is the fire that he has for us, the desire before there was sin and the willingness to not just fight through sin but put it all on himself to gain us back to him? Oh my God, we've got to get out of the religious view of everything. Um, all right, so let me... Let me read um, Ezekiel 43, <clears throat> verse 1 and 7. It says, and listen to this in relationship to what we just read, okay? About the throne and all that. <clears throat> um, but also think of this in light of we are the house of God, we're the dwelling place of God, and what God wants to do with it, okay? So just listen carefully. Afterwards, he brought me to the gate, and that means the entrance, even the gate that looketh toward the east, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like, is this, is this sound familiar to some of this? You know, having the glory of God, what is this? And his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth, the earth shined with his glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city, and the visions were like the visions that I saw by the river Chebar, and I fell upon my face. I've got goosebumps all over me because if you know Ezekiel, you know that this vision came and to him, but it was the exact opposite. It was the leaving of the presence of God from the house and put through captivity to learn and to, to, to find him in a real way because everything around them while they were in, in Jerusalem and in Israel, they had made religious things and the true and living God wasn't there. And so I said, if I'm not going to be here, if it's not going to be about me, I'll withdraw myself, but not to destroy you, but to bring you back with a new understanding and a new relationship with me. <clears throat> and I fell on my face and the glory of the Lord came into the house it's coming back in it's the glory of the Lord Christ in you the hope of glory this reality is coming back into her and the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east so the spirit took me up didn't we just read that in verse 9 here in 10 so the Spirit <clears throat> took me up and brought me into the inter inner court, into the wow. inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And many times, and I've said this before, you may not remember, but many times when it uses the word behold, it's talking about the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. 
And it's talking about the Lamb of God. And this is, what is it that fills the house? The Lamb on His throne. Okay? <clears throat> um, and I heard, and I heard Him speaking unto me out of the house. <laughs> speaking unto me out of the house. That's what God wants to be able to do. <clears throat> and the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne. The house. This is the place of my throne. And the place of the soles of my feet. Where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. This is it. This is the final appearing. This is whatever Israel experienced before this. It wasn't the omega. It might have been the alpha part, but it wasn't the omega. This is the end here, just like the book of Revelation is. And it's, it is revealing this plan, this eternal thing that was always in his heart. <clears throat> uh, and my uh, shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever, and my holy name. Uh, shall the, and my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile neither they nor their kings by their whoredoms nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high, or in their high places and so here it is this spirit of whoredom the spirit of, of what what do you call whoredom taking another image and loving it Taking another image and loving it instead of the Lamb, instead of loving Him for who He is and the way that He is, we love Him as if He were one of one of these other images that does what it does for us, really for their own sake. Wrong, deep, deeply wrong motive here. <clears throat> um, all right, so. Just quoting again, this is the place of my throne. This is where I will live. The house of Israel will never again defile by lifeless idols or perverted images. By perverted images. So these were the problems. Without the correct image, without the, I mean, come on. Without the correct image, it doesn't matter how religious we become. It doesn't matter how really, it doesn't matter what we do ministry wise. We've got the wrong image and therefore we've got the wrong motives working in us. And, we're, and we will do things based on us and our view and our mind and our image. Amen? So without the correct image, they will build all according to their own understanding of who he truly is instead of according to who he is. God said in verse 7 that this house, this house, this habitation, this is, he didn't call it, you know, they call it this house. That's the place of my, my throne. Just like chapter 21 of Revelation. And I looked and I saw New Jerusalem and and her walls were like transparent glass and I looked within and there was the lamb on the throne within her and there the waters of the, the living waters of life flowed out of them him them because they're one she's in him and they're one and it's gonna flow see that's what Jesus said when this thing gets to where it's supposed to be, out of your innermost being, well, guess what who your innermost being is? It's the Lamb of God. It's Him. And the, see, we always go, well, I'm, I'm glad these people don't know what I'm really like around here because in my innermost being, I am corrupt. I'm evil. I'm bad. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, you are all of that, but not in your innermost being if you, if you have Christ in there. Because that's the lamb. That's the lamb. And and she for that to for that to flow, you have to have him in your innermost being in understanding and in relationship. The relationship can't be 
me as the house the relationship has to be him and you know sometimes when we mess up we go well he's not enthroned in me yes he is you're just you know you're gonna have to turn your faith to the right you know what I mean you gotta get your faith pointed on the right person you know because you seem to have a lot of faith that you're messed up Um, this house was the place of his throne but another house the house of Israel had previously defiled it with lifeless images another house the house of Israel they weren't the house of the lamb they weren't the wife of the lamb at that time they had been defiled with lifeless images images image another image not just idols another image we make that image an idol because it serves our lust it serves our flesh it serves our um, selfish motives we make it an idol and call it American Idol I don't know anyway when God says this is the place of my throne he is telling you of the Lamb who is the image of the invisible God and that he is there to be seen as the image of God he's in there and she has transparent walls for one purpose to be seen as the image of God that's why she's transparent <laughs> so he can be seen as the image of God and, and and people can look at her and go you know what I see Christ I see the Lamb I see I see that, that what once was an invisible God to me he is the image of the invisible God <clears throat> it speaks of New Jerusalem being inhabited and ruled by nature because he's in he's enthroned in her see there's not a throne inside of her that has uh, tables of stone with Ten Commandments written on it so all your legalism you need to dump it you need to dump your legalism you need to find him as your core <clears throat> let's see well in uh, <clears throat> let's look over uh, just because I want to add this to it uh, Revelation 22 verse 3 Because this, this goes right along, this is perfectly goes right along with it. Revelation 22, verse 3. Get ready. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. What is that? Oh my God. No more, no longer any more curse in her. I mean, it says it says it there shall be no more curse this is after it's shown the lamb after it's shown him enthroned in her guess what when he's enthroned in her there's going to be no more curse but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in her praise God and then they will serve See, it didn't say, and they will be kings and rulers. Yes, because that's what we do. See, we don't see Jesus in her. We see a new Jerusalem, a place where we're going to live, and we're going to get thrones, and we're going to rule over everything, which, what's left? But anyway, uh, well, I'm just asking <laughs> the, way that, <laughs> the way that people think, but the way this all reads is, there are going to still be that because this doesn't just apply to an end time picture this is supposed to be worked in us now also spirit then soul then body if it's true in the spirit it can work down in your soul manifest out of your body <clears throat> um, so I wrote uh, also compare Revelation 21 27 and there shall in no wise enter into it this is talking about her now <laughs> this is talking about his house 
Okay? And there shall in no wise enter in, into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, that, that they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. That's all that's going to be in there. Lamb's book of good works. No, Lamb's book of life. This is all about life, and it's all about union, and it's all about, for us, it's all about Him. It's all about Him to our heart. But you get in the book of Revelation, and you make this an end time thing, and the only thing you can think about is you, and sur your survival instinct kicks in, and then you want to just, you know, you know, I, I got to watch the news, and I got to listen to this guy who's giving prophecy about everything, and all this kind of stuff. How about when you see these things coming on the earth, look up! And what Jesus told us that we go well forget what Jesus said so and so on the TV said this you know you know John I mean God you know he's on the Isle of Patmos he's in exile he's in he's a prisoner there and then all of a sudden he sees a door opened up there and a voice says, come up here, get out of your trial, get out of your prison, come up here and see things from this place. And so he's writing all this for us, right in the middle of his great trial. <clears throat> um, the throne of God and, and of the Lamb will be in this city and his servants will serve him on that basis, that the throne of God and of the Lamb are in her. In him, in her, in this city, and his servants shall serve. What is it? And his servants shall serve him. Isn't that beautiful? It didn't say, well, and they're going to be the greatest ministers to go out into the world. This is going to be memorial ministry. This is going to be, you know, we we could say, well, Good, we'll get to wash his feet because he washed Peter's. And good, we'll get to... No, no, no. Serving him isn't just about let's do a thing and you go do a thing and everybody do a thing. It's, it's about understanding his heart and being able to serve him the things of his heart that are deepest there that he just doesn't declare. He just doesn't do it. He wants us to discover that. Kingdom of heaven is like this. Treasure hidden in the field. Go find it. Go, you know, dig it up. Buy the whole field just to get what's in his heart. The treasure of his heart. <clears throat> well, I'm doing pretty good here. Thank you, Jesus. Remember Revelation 3, 20 through 21? Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> that is a stronghold of holding up the things of his heart, the things that he cares about. Making it strong where he lives. Stabilizing that as the, as the stabilizing truth. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God. That's funny. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. That's where you dwell. That's, that's Revelation 3, 20 and 21. And he shall go out no more, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God. I'm going to write on New Jerusalem, wife of the Lamb. I'm going to put it on you. I, Jesus is talking to you. I'm going to write this on you. So anybody got... That's my wife. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is glorious. We, By the way, we read this when we began this class. Anybody at that time go, Oh my God! You couldn't because that's kind of the early... Remember, that's still the church in the earth. It's not up above and it's not the things that are above. 
I will write uh, and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem which cometh down oh it says it again not just New Jerusalem but New Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from God it's that spirit again that he loves that's beautiful to him it moves him to be that way to be after his kind to bear his image to bear his image praise God and I will write upon him my new name I wonder what that new name is maybe it's lamb because that was new sort of until you got to the book of Revelation and then it's used over 20 some odd times bless you <clears throat> okay if you overcome everything in the same way he overcame them then you will get the right to sit with the slaughtered lamb in his throne <laughs> <Woo -hoo! clears throat> uh, what is it that you overcome we overcome the idolatrous images that stand up against others in order to protect itself we have idolatrous images in us that stand up to protect ourselves from others and we all do I do we all do we see if I could if I could catch you every time you did it and then just read this to you <laughs> you know all of a sudden I just appeared and go and we have da 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 you go oh my god he's right I didn't really believe it before because I'm so perfect <laughs> you know <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we have no clue that we cling to idols that came from foreign minds and not the mind of Christ and that's exactly what it is my friends <laughs> It is foreign minds have taught us what the word means and what is the heart of God and what is it. And the mind of Christ, you know, Paul said, let this mind be in you and it described the Lamb's mind and, the, and his attitudes. God is not, okay, so this is important. God is not merely anti-idols. This is important. We think he's anti-Christ. He's, he's the one who get, who listen he allows antichrist to have power and to make war it says that and to kill the saints he's not he's not anti the beast antichrist he's going to use it if they're going to be beast he'll use that for his glory <clears throat> so he's not merely anti-idols he wants them removed and replaced with what was original what was originally in his heart that's not anti-idols that is pro that's that's like that's like pro i love you you know one's oh, against these are that's just upset with everything i don't like that and this and that i mean if jesus came in this room and he was anti-idols he would rip and tear tonight because he'd see all the stuff you don't even see as idols. He'd go, this is wrong and that, if that was his spirit. This is that and this and you, you have these 5,000 things right here. I'm going to go down the list for you. And you know, and he'd go, oh my God. But he's not anti-idols. He's pro having us with him in the thing that, of his heart. Like I said, he's pro I love you. On the throne, we notice that the outward images, uh, the outward image of God is, on the throne, we notice that the outward image of God is Lamb. That is how we can tell if something is of His image by comparing to what's on that throne. Is that on our, the throne of our heart? Or do we see another image at times? <clears throat> that is what we want people to outwardly see from us, the Lamb on the throne. It is Lamb that shines through transparent glass. The inward image of Christ is seen best in His wife. 
it's best seen. It's best seen in what relates as wife, what relates as one, what relates you know, like memorial ministry, um, Mary Bethany that comes in there and doesn't ask for anything but pours out the best that she has but greater than the oil the tears and the love and kissing his feet and wiping them with the hair of her head and just looking up into his face knowing that she's doing this for his burial she may not understand it all see you know what you don't have to understand Jesus dying for sin to understand Jesus is a self-giving lamb who will die for you see that's a different that's a different thing it's different it's a different and there are a lot of things that people in the Gospels did see and honored about Jesus that had nothing to do with their having any understanding of that he was going to die for sin It's a, it's a truth. So I've gone through and I've looked at things. Uh, I even taught it in a class here. It was called Four Gospels. And I went through that whole class and I was trying to point out stuff over and over and over of his heart that you could find and that, that were identifiers of them grasping something that had nothing to do with the great Christian understanding. They were just knowing him. And she's a perfect example of that. <clears throat> in Revelation 21, 9 through 11, we see this image reflected in her. Come, I will show you the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away and showed me her coming down, descending from God. <laughs> it's just hard to get away from this if you see it now if you don't see it then you just you hear me or you hear somebody else um, and it bears witness I know this feeling because I've been in your place before it bears witness but if you go back I mean this is what I did this is when I was in Bible school or other times and somebody be sharing and man I'd look at it and I'd go oh my god I see it I see it really this is it but I didn't realize it was only bearing witness and I would go back to my room and look at it and go, I don't see anything now. See? Okay, so what's, what's the deal then? What is our goal then? Um, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. But there's more that comes after that. There's, that's verse... 14 I guess or Romans 8 somewhere along in there um, but then verse 26 I think it is where we must be conformed to the image of him see and even before that there is this manifestation the revealing of the sons of God there's a process and there's a book of revelation process and you might be up in chapter in your spiritual walk in chapter one or or one of the churches or something like that but it it is bringing us through and God the Holy Spirit he is man I mean you see that with uh, with uh, as Eliezer on the camels and bringing uh, Rebecca out and 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 the whole trip they're going to Isaac and she's going to be a bride for Isaac. And the Holy Spirit is taking her there. And the Father had sent the Holy Spirit to go get a bride. And so here they come. And, and he's talking. And he's not going, you know, uh, there's this thing called sin. And he died so that we wouldn't be sinners. And once you meet him, you're going to be saved. And you get to go to heaven. And it's going to be wonderful. And... Um, you know, she's talking about Isaac, him. I mean, he is. He, he, Eliezer is saying, look, he's the son of the father. The bright and morning star to his heart. And let me tell you about his heart. Let me tell you about not just, well, 
Uh, he's got dark brown hair, and he's got, uh, you know, he's got a little limp, you know, but it's 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 kind of cute. You like it, and you know, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? Go, all this stupid stuff that is nothing compared to getting inside. I mean, that's that, you know, getting inside there and being able to walk around in his heart in the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and then uh, I'm going to read out of Ezekiel again. I'm going to read out of several different scriptures here. Um, <clears throat> this is Ezekiel 43:12, and it says, This is the law of the house. <laughs> Yeah, Ezekiel 43, this is the law of the house. Well, who's the house again? We are. <clears throat> Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. This is, it's going to shine out beyond her. Remember we talked about the outshining last Sunday night? The outshining? It shines beyond her. It's greater than her is the point. Uh, there is an outshining and manifestation that reaches beyond into the surrounding. It is a law of the temple of the house. If Lamb is housed there, then all the surrounding area of Zion will be affected. Praise God. <clears throat> and then Psalm 45, 11. So shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. For he is thy Lord, and worship thou him. And I wrote, God is enthralled with beauty, lamb beauty as seen in us. It is his image. He is enthralled with her beauty. This spirit means more to him than anything else. There are so many things we think, well, you know, um, you know, he would want this and he would want that and da 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 da. And most of that's coming from our own mind of what we think is really, really, really important. But to him, that spirit, that coming down spirit that doesn't have to exalt itself, he exalts her. This is my house and the place of my throne. He'll, you know. What did he say to, to the disciples when they were putting down Mary of Bethany? Let her alone. She has done this for me. She's done this and touched my heart on a level y'all don't even know yet. Twelve disciples. He stood up for her. <clears throat> so point being we shouldn't be standing up we don't have to stand up for ourselves we can get low um, Psalm 50 verse 2 out of Zion the perfection of beauty God hath shined oh we are New Jerusalem is Zion out of Zion she's shining out of her out of us out of Zion the perfection of beauty that's what he calls her because she's allowing him to manifest his image. Out of Zion, the perfection of God hath shined forth. Oh my God. It is out of Zion that beauty shines forth. <clears throat> Isaiah 33, verse 17. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. See, this is how she gets there. How does she become Zion that where this shines out of her? Right here. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off because you're not there yet. See, this is, this is the path now. I probably should have put this before that the other one. But this is the path to being the Zion, which is the perfection of beauty. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty, and I'm going to go after him, though he's afar off from what's, what's true in me. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Even so, our eyes must first see the king in his beauty. It starts with seeing that kind of beauty. Amen? That's where it starts. <clears throat> And then uh, 
Zechariah 9, verse 16 and 17. 